Welcome back to Overview of the Bible, CST 100, and uh, we're continuing through the Gospels in the video lectures this week, and uh, there will be four videos, but I'm trying to be conscious of the time, so let's get right into the Gospel of Mark, and uh, the Gospel of Mark is the shortest of the Gospels. Um, again, it does deal with some of the uh, Messianic expectations. Um, especially some of the misunderstandings in regards to that. Um, the Gospel of Mark also, again, shows the humanity uh, that Jesus was human, as well as Jesus was the Son of God, or uh, called the Son of Man, with all authority and power. So he was both God and both man. And that uh, Jesus, as the Son of Man, uh, would suffer but that he is still Lord. And, and uh, there's an emphasis on Jesus calling his followers to uh, be in humble service and self-denial and to even join with him in his suffering. And I believe this makes a, a, a critical connection to um, Peter being the primary source, the Apostle Peter being the primary source, even though Mark was known or John Mark, who was a close associate of Peter, as being uh, the one who probably actually wrote it. Uh, but uh, it's attributed, or by name attributed to Mark, who was a close associate of Peter. And um, Peter in the, in the, uh, would have been in Rome somewhere around the time of the 50s, uh, early 50s, um, as as uh, we know, and again, not going to take the time to delve into all that history, um, but it's probably around the early 50s, maybe 50 A.D., uh, when the gospel was actually written, and um, the references that are given that deal so many times personally with some of Peter's um, experiences are strong evidence to that background of Peter. Uh, telling, telling and recounting the events to uh, John Mark that he might describe them. And, and the purpose is to, again, once again, give us the life and death and resurrection of Jesus in light of the Old Testament promises. But different from Matthew, uh, Mark seems to be dealing with these Old Testament promises in view of a new exodus. And so uh, that's important to understand that difference between uh, Matthew and Mark, that Mark's looking at it from a new, uh, a new exodus, a new deliverance, uh, um, a completion, a fulfillment, an understanding. And so um, with Mark's uh, gospel, we have probably the shortest and maybe not so much a biography by the way that it's written, as much as more like a, a documentary or a docudrama where we see um, specific encounters in some of the narrative um, passages, but also um, not as much detail or background given, but just tied to specific points or emphases that are being made. And so um, it, it probably by today's literary standards wouldn't be seen as a biography as much as more of a documentary um, as Mark is recording uh, the events uh, that Peter is relaying to him. And it begins uh, specifically not with the birth of Christ. Um, a key term that's used in um, Mark's gospel is immediately. And you'll see this consistently as you read through uh, the gospel of Mark. Also the aspect of discipleship and being a, a follower, as I mentioned earlier, a, a humble follower of Jesus Christ and living in in service and in self-denial, but also the narrative focus on the cross. And that's where we get into um, some more of the, the specific detail, moving primarily from Peter's denial forward. You can really see the, um, the influence of Peter in the words that are written. Um, the, the new Exodus, as we mentioned already, uh, we see introduced in the opening verses with John the Baptist coming as one proclaiming uh, the way of the Lord and uh, the temptation of Jesus and all of this in a really brief amount of time in that first chapter. But then 
uh, Jesus turning to uh, or the the events of Jesus recording in his healing ministry and then Jesus himself as the suffering servant. So let's kind of walk through the outline uh, and I want to read a few verses or at least make reference to uh, John chapter 1. We mentioned uh, John the Baptist and Mark's gospel does not begin with uh, the birth of Christ. Uh, Matthew's gospel and Luke's gospel um, have those at the beginning of their records. Um, but Mark, uh, Mark's gospel gets right into this, this introductory idea of John the Baptist coming and making the way of Christ. And so I want to read from Mark chapter 1, uh, beginning in uh, verse 1. It says, In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make ready the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And so we see that immediate connection with the Old Testament, but it's this idea of this deliverance or this exodus as being a primary theme. And so um, John the Baptist is preaching in the wilderness. Uh, Jesus comes as... Matthew's Gospel records Jesus comes to be baptized uh, by John and then um, again briefly mentioned but not to the same detail of Matthew's Gospel uh, we see Jesus temptation in the wilderness referenced in Mark so we see all this as the setup and following that same idea of being the Messiah or the chosen one of the Christ uh, but we see it in a much um, more brief context and not as much detail uh, spelled out but uh, the events that Christ went through in preparation for his earthly ministry um, and then we see towards the latter part of chapter 1 through verse uh, through chapter 8 we see Jesus work and ministry in and around Galilee uh, primarily um, Mark 1 14 and 15 gives us that transition of Jesus coming into Galilee and proclaims the gospel of God. Uh, following that, Jesus calls his calls the twelve, and uh, we see some of the events of the healing around the Sea of Galilee and, and of course, controversy um, with Jewish leaders that it's mentioned in chapter 3, um, verse 6. Uh, again, Paralleling a passage in Matthew in Mark chapter 3, Jesus heals uh, a man in the synagogue. Um, they believe he's working on the Sabbath, which they also believe is a violation of God's law. And as a result of Jesus healing, Jesus dealing with them, as Mark chapter 3 points out, in the mistakenness of the attitude in their hearts, um, not in regards to the law, but in the attitude of their hearts. Jesus deals with them, and Mark chapter 3, verse 6 tells us uh, that from that time they conspired uh, to put Jesus to death. And so you really see early on this, this animosity that they held uh, because Jesus was dealing with the heart issue, which is sin. And um, as a result, uh, their understanding of the law, they, they turned against him. Um, however, the popularity of uh, of Jesus ministry grows as anyone would understand and rightfully so as he um, not only heals um, but also exercises demons um, around the Sea of Galilee um, and in between there he uh, Mark includes passages of Christ's teaching chapter 4 predominantly teaching chapter 5 of Mark is one of the well-known stories um, of the Gospels if you've if you've spent any time or if you have a knowledge of the background of the Gospels where um, Jesus crosses over to Gerasene, uh, comes across uh, or meets the uh, demon-possessed man of whom there are many demons and uh, there is no earthly solution for him. He can't be chained, he can't be institutionalized, he can't be contained and um, as a result Jesus casts the demons into the pigs, the pigs run into the sea and and are drowned and of course all the stir that that caused that's the beginning of of mark chapter 5 and then through mark chapter 5 we see um, jesus being called out by uh, the synagogue leader jairus 
uh, because of the illness of his daughter and on his way to heal Jairus, um, a woman comes up behind him just to touch his garment. And as a result of that, he, uh, she is healed and Jesus makes it clear that it's due to her faith. Well, by this time, Jesus is told, you know, there's no reason to go to Jairus's house. His uh, daughter has already died, but Jesus goes and Jairus's daughter is um, brought back from death uh, by uh, the miraculous work of Jesus. And even though he instructs um, others, you know, not to not to be told, obviously, the word spreads. Um, and then Jesus leaves that immediate area around the Sea of Galilee and heads towards his uh, ministry in Jerusalem. And uh, on the way to Jerusalem, there is uh, Peter's recognition of Jesus um, as the Son of God. So again, we start, or now we start to see this primary emphasis on on some of the detail in, in Peter's experience with Christ, uh, which we talked about the writing, um, as was being told to uh, John Mark earlier, or Mark as he's known, and as the title of the gospel is given. And then we see Jesus' work and ministry in the final week of his life while he's uh, in Jerusalem. And then the Passion narrative, again, the, uh, the, the, the arrest, um, the, the, uh, Peter's denial, and um, then ultimately the trial and suffering and death of Christ. And then um, Mark's Gospel. Uh, ends with the the empty tomb and the women uh, being made aware of that and that word going forth. And then we see Mark's version of the Great Commission in uh, the latter part of chapter 16. And you'll have a footnote in your own personal Bible or you'll see it in the ESV study Bible in regards to um, the last half of that chapter or, or a little more than the last half of that chapter not being contained in all the most um, reliable manuscripts, and, and that should be noted, although it does once again talk about the, the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, being taken to all creation or to all creatures. And um, so again, ending with that call upon those who are followers of Christ and who have become disciples of his to make disciples of others. Um, but again, um, not in the same sense or not worded in the same way that Matthew's gospel is. Um, and uh, again, you can check your ESV study of Bible or if you have another version of a Bible that would um, recognize that not every manuscript uh, would contain uh, those same uh, those same verses. So uh, that's a really brief walkthrough in the gospel of Mark and just hitting some of the highlights. But but being, being mindful of this idea of a new exodus, um, a, a new deliverance, a new coming out of, uh, of what you were before. And we see it in the, um, in the man who was delivered of the demons. We see it in the healing of the woman. Uh, we see it in the, uh, the Jesus healing Jairus' and bringing Jairus' daughter back to life. Um, all pictures that point towards this this new exodus in Christ as uh, he leads us to the kingdom and in the way that we should live as a follower of his. Again, a uh, couple more videos for this week and uh, try to be conscious of the timing on that. And so we'll hit the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of John before this week is done. I want to again, and, and I hope You'll get tired of hearing me say this, but I also hope that you're getting the message. Please keep up with your weekly reading, your weekly questions out of Robert's uh, book, um, as well as your sermon responses um, that are due over the course of uh, our time together. And uh, trust that you'll begin to start thinking through the paper that you'll write as a storyline of the Bible. And so I trust God's blessings upon you. Look forward to our time uh, together. God bless you.